bar bar stuff is your leader, the General Secretary of the Five Yards Union. Put your hands together for Matt Rapp. amazing turnout uh, and what struck me watching it today was that what we saw is that the fire service is a uniform disciplined public service and the people who work in it are uniform disciplined people you showed that today and you showed that that will be reflected in how uniform disciplined we are when it comes to fighting a battle that we face with these people in this building today and uh, I saw I heard Joe's uh, comments earlier. The, the last time I saw Joe wearing a, a uniform shirt and tie, I was representing him and disciplining him. That's not to be repeated. Did you win it? But we've been told by this government that uh, we are all in it together. And I have never heard such a lot of old nonsense. Because what is happening in this society is that the rich bankers, multi-millionaires, are once again getting huge bonuses and the people who are expected to pay the price for the economic crisis are ordinary working people and their families, and in particular those who work in the public services. So when we hear we're all in it together, it is complete lies and we need to reject it. The only people who are in it together are working people through their trade unions. We're in it together and we will stick together to defend ourselves and to defend our employers how much they value us, we hear from chief offices how much they value us, well I tell you the fire services employers wasted no time as soon as the budget announcement was made, the very next day they wrote to us and said unfortunately we can't make you a pay offer for 2010, that's how much they value us brothers and sisters. That's how much they care. That's the so-called family that the fire service of these people represent. And we also face from the government further attacks on our pensions and we need to be prepared to stand with our brothers and sisters in other unions to defend the pension rights of firefighters and people in other public services. <laughs> and alongside that, they're saying that they intend to introduce cuts in the order of 25%. And I say here, I said here at the TUC this week, it is absolute lunacy to think you can run a fire service and cut 25% of it. And if the people in there don't realise that, they don't deserve to be in the positions that they're in. Hey! And the fire authority and this government will claim they've got a mandate. Well, we've done our own public opinion survey about cuts in the fire and rescue service. YouGov, not, not us, an independent organisation, polled the public during August. And this is what the public said about cuts in the fire and rescue service. 85% of the public said that they did not want to see fire service budgets reduced. And 95% of the public said they did not want to see the number of firefighters reduced. So that's what the public think of us. The public have huge respect for the work that you do. Right on his own. And those who come along and say they've got a mandate to make cuts do not represent the public of London, do not represent the public of the United Kingdom. The people who stand up for this service for ourselves and for the public is the Fire Brigade Union and the members of the Fire Brigade Union here today. And I don't know if people saw this yesterday in the Daily Mail and the Daily Telegraph. There was an article following a speech by a certain Chief Fire Officer in Merseyside, his name is Tony McGurk. And Tony McGurk, I, I uh, have some dealings with him. In the uh, mail and, and the telegraph yesterday, what he said was that the public sector is full of people who are bone idle. And these are the people who claim to lead public services. He boasted about the fact he's got 700 odd jobs in the Merseyside Fire and Rescue Service. These people are an utter disgrace. 
and adds Tony McGurk is one of the best paid chief fire officers in the country. £200,000 a year. He's done very well out of modernisation. And I'd say this to Tony McGurk. Apparently he's going to apologise. I think too little, too late. He's insulted firefighters. He's insulted public sector workers. The best thing he could do for public service efficiency is to hand his notice in today. officer who shoots from the hip and talks utter rubbish. We've already they talk about a bloated public sector. Well under the last lot we were already under attack. Under the last lot we already saw something like 3,000 firefighters jobs go. So there is no waste in the fire and rescue service. We are efficient, we have modernised, we have changed and as Ian mentioned People are doing very different things today than we did 20 years ago. People are being given targets to go out and fit smoke alarms to uh, train young people to speak to our elderly communities and so on. And every time they set a target in London, you have beaten that target. So we don't need any lectures about further need for improvement, modernisation. You've done it every single time you've been asked. Here in the, apparently as you've heard today, they have moved the meeting from the room behind us to a bunker. I don't know if anyone has seen the film Downfall about uh, the fall of Hitler. He of course moved to a bunker and in the process became slightly mad as well. So perhaps the same outcome awaits these They're people. Already They're already mad! They're already mad! After themselves, they vote themselves increases in allowances at the very same time as they tell you lot you face the dull queue if you don't accept their changes. And I think it's an absolute scandal that they have also, in the aftermath of the local elections, fiddled the outcome of El FIFA to maintain a Tory majority. And I think there is a challenge there for Boris Johnson why he sits and allows Second. Ryan Coleman, who is such a disgrace to British politics, to get away with what he does. Johnson should intervene and Anyone? sack him today. Absolutely nothing, an absolute disgrace. And I've said this before about some of the changes we've seen in our service, because some people have done very well, very well. Chief fire officers have done very well in terms of pay over the past five years. Their pay increases, by the way, have been more than double percentage-wise the pay of people who are on NJC rates of pay. They've done very nicely, thank you very much. Other people have built the little empires, because while firefighters' jobs have been cut, public relations empires are built, human resources empires are built. People who then come in and know nothing whatsoever about firefighting, nothing whatsoever about the job that you do, but think they can tell us how to do it better. What a lot of old rubbish. And I talk about negotiations. Well, I'll tell you this, we're prepared to negotiate. Your officials are prepared to negotiate, but you don't negotiate with a gun to your head. And that's what they're now doing too. That's now they are now trying to treat us. And our response will be, tomorrow, in the ballot result for action short strike, will be an overwhelming yes vote. I am absolutely sure of that. And when we now start the next ballot for strike action, well, I'm absolutely confident of it. And we are tragically waiting in the wings. This organisation, and Liam mentioned what happened in South Yorkshire and the tragedy of some people deciding to ignore a democratic decision uh, to take strike action. And nobody wants to take strike action in this job. Nobody wants to take strike action in an emergency service, but neither are we willing to be pushed around and treated with contempt like Dobson and Coleman are treating us. 
But in the background, they have this organisation, Acid Coal. Who they say? 